right, the bags are all packed and we're ready to go hunting, but um, one of the first things you have to do before you go hunting is ring your mates and tell them you're going hunting. So I thought I might ring a couple up. I'll ring one of the mates that I normally hunt with. He's working at the moment, so it's only fair that he knows that I'm going hunting. I'll just turn that down a bit. Hello, this is Matt. Matthew. What are you doing? Uh, I've got to go hunting. What are you doing? Now, working? What are you, where are you hunting? <laughs> Can't tell you. <laughs> what are you hunting? <laughs> Can't tell you. <laughs> You're an idiot. Who are you hunting with? Can't tell you. I just thought I'd ring so you up. Rang, <laughs> I just thought I'd ring you up and let you know I'm going hunting. <laughs> well, yeah, good mate you are. Here I am working hard for the money and still going off hunting. <laughs> You'll I be doing it to me hunting. next week. How do, I get your, how do I get your job? Well, it's a hard job. It's we a have hard to suffer. Job. Yeah. Well, guess gonna... what I'm doing next time I'm going hunting. Ah, you're not going to ring me, are you? Ring you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you dirty dog. Very good. Yeah, All right, yeah, I'll let you get back to it. Yeah, good on you, you mug. Clear, mate. <laughs> See ya. I've got the two dogs with me here. Uh, I've got the mum, which is Meg, and the pup, believe it or not, crossed with a toilet brush is Lexi. And in the back, I don't know whether you can see it, but we've got a Samba stag. There's a story behind that. I had the, it's a beautiful head and I had it mounted um, uh, about six months ago and it's almost like it's crossed with a donkey. It's the worst mount I've seen. So I'm taking it up to Bright to Ian Humphreys, one of our local taxidermists, and he's gonna see if he can get me a cape and fix it up for us. So I'll keep you posted, but it's, uh, should be a good day in the bush. So we'll be out staying overnight, hopefully hunt this afternoon and tomorrow morning. So I hunt with one dog each day. Talk to you soon. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you get when you cross a donkey with a samba. We call it a sam donk or a, a sonkey. Uh, it was a one that I, it was a stag that I shot about. Uh, what would it be, five years ago now, been saving up to get the mount done. I chased this guy for about three years. We had video footage of him on the camera and he bumped me a couple of, I bumped him a couple of times. And uh, yeah, saving up to get the taxidermy done. And I had it done about six months ago and this is how it came back. I don't know whether you can see, but I've never seen a sand that looks like that in the bush with a really long neck. So I think the taxidermist has used a red stag and it just does not look like a samba. So I'm dropping it off tomorrow at Ian Humphreys up in Bright. He's a taxidermist, a local taxidermist, and does a fantastic job. He's got a 30 inch cape for me and he's just gonna make sure that everything's gonna fit okay. And hopefully we can restore this back to looking like a samba. That's the plan. The Sam donk or the sonky, call it whatever you like. Could be a giraffe. Uh, this is what I'll be shooting with this evening. Uh, it's the it's a Seiko 75 stock with a simple finish. I don't know whether you can see that finish, but it's beautiful to hold if it's wet and snowy. Uh, this is a 75 stock, but it's got a Tika T3 inleted for it. So it shoots beautifully. If you saw the post on Facebook the other day, it shoots a nice tight group. Hopefully we'll get something with it today. I like the Seiko 75 because of the, the cheek piece here. I don't know whether you can see it. I'll spin it around for you. But just that cheek piece is um, absolutely fantastic. But beautiful to shoot with. So we call this a stipple under paint finish. I don't know, whether, but if you can feel it, it's just not slippery like a normal stock is. It's got a nice rubberized finish. Beautiful stock, weighs all up about 680 grams. And looking forward to seeing what we can do with it this afternoon. So I'm meeting up with Ian. He's been up here fencing for a local farmer. And I'll meet him about four o'clock. And we'll go for a hunt and see what we can find. And hopefully we come back with some but yeah, it shoots beautiful, nice Swarovski 1 to 7 scope on it. Uh, and looking forward to being able to show you something later today. So, this is our uh, Samba colour stock made for the Australian bush here, hand painted, 
two-pack finish. What we've got here is a Tika inleted for a Tika. Uh, fantastic in the bush, as you can see, matches the colours nicely. And once again, super light carbon fibre with hand-painted two-pack over the top. This is a battle truck that takes us out hunting. Nice 100 series cruiser, it's got all the goodies on it. Winched, bull bar, driving lights, high man canopy. Came our rear bar at the back. Comes complete with a German wide head pointer. So I'm just going to have to take this down, but I was just thinking to myself, even though it does look like a donkey, there is nothing quite like seeing these things in the bush. They are just a magnificent, majestic animal. And you wouldn't think something so big could be so quiet. Well, this is where we'll be slumming it for the night. This is Ian. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one. Did you bring milk? Nope. Do you want a man's cup of tea? Can you, got any milk in there? <laughs> Have you got a cow in this place? Better if I had butter in it. Butter would be right. So this is our accommodation for the night. It's a bit rough, but oh, thank you. It's a bit rough, but we'll make do. Very nice. So what a beautiful spot. Right beside the river, just out there. And we'll be hunting up in those hills over there. This is Ian's dog Stella. Joanne's dog, Stella. Joanne's dog. Oh, get to oh. Her. oh. Ah, he borrows it from his wife to take it hunting. <laughs> Correct. Have you got a leave pass for that? I do. You have? Black tea. Oh. Not good for the dairy industry. <laughs> That's right. So, this is how we get ready for all our hunts hot cross buns, nice leather pack butter. Oh, yeah, chocolate bullets. Need bullets. No, no, bullets. Go bullets. no good hunting with our bullets. That'll give us energy, I believe, but you could carry out my big stag. The one that's still involved with soft felt. That's it. Chips. Yeah. And it's fascinating, every time we call him up, his radio doesn't work. How does that happen? Only after you fire a shot. Yeah. Reckon this will be a winner? <laughs> I think you need, like, plaid pants or whatever they call them, tweed. And a tweed hat. <laughs> and a tweed hat. How do you reckon that'll go? Yeah. Uh, Deer Hunter's Revenge. I think we're forever getting caught in these blackberry things. It's just nice that sometimes the year we can actually um, eat them. And they're so nice and juicy. They make beautiful blackberry jam. And the foxes love them too. Heard a shot from me and he must have got something. I actually heard two shots just over that way somewhere, but he hasn't got his radio, so I can't even go help him carry it out because I'm not even sure where he is. Uh, it didn't do any good. We got to um, this, uh, wallow up there, the dogs scented something, and so we sort of stalked in. Then they've got a little breath of wind on the back, bang, off crashed a stag who was sitting in the wallow. Them's the brakes. I've seen three today. I might still pick one up on the way home. It's just getting towards deer o'clock now. Should be perfect. But uh, we've just sort of mosey on back towards the car. Should be back at the car just after dark. Okay. Here we go. Getting in the morning, getting ready to go. The old Sonky had a nice sleep. They even got one yesterday. Meats in the free fridge. Mm -hmm. What are you going to get today, Glue? Hot and sweaty. <laughs>
50 yards. Now we are more Detroit. Nice and light to carry. We're just working our way over to see how we went. Butcher it up, get it back to the car. It looks like a nice little yummy model. The mum was pretty big and old. I might have to walk away. But um, hopefully we'll get this little one. We'll wander over. The mum today, this is Meg. She gets a bit excited when she hears a gun. She's not real good when they hear fireworks either. They roll down the hill a bit. Oh, where's this is your dog? I'll head back down there. Meg, give me. Meg, where is it? Psst. Where is it? Psst. Find it. Find it. Where is it? Down there, is it? Oh, there she goes. She's found it. Good girl. Good girl. Good to have a dog. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Oh, that mum must have been big because this one looks small in comparison. This one looked like a, a little fella. That must have been a big old doe. She took off up the top there somewhere. Alright. We'll start butchering it up. Time to start the hard work. Now I've got to carry it out of here too. We'll work it out. Well, a bit of a story. We just started hunting this morning. Hadn't been going for too long at all. Came around the ridge over there and saw, uh, I thought this was uh, probably half the size it was, but a mum and a bub. The mum was obviously huge. So we sort of propped over there, Meg, got Meg to sit beside me, and uh, probably about 150, 160 yards. They're just feeding away nicely, watched them for about 20 minutes, waited for this one to feed out a little bit further into the clearing and uh, shot her in the neck. So now starts the job of butchering it all up and this will be the fun part. Using a Bark River knife that I got from Elks Hunting and Fishing a while ago. I had one of my really good knives stolen out of my car using a, um, I think it's a ceramic steel, it's quite good, it go well. I feel like giving him a helping hand, but I don't think we don't want to interfere with nature, do we? He's ripping it, he's getting it. As long as he's biting that meat, he's not biting my arms. Oh, he's got it, well done. There you go, now he's happy. We'll let him go back here. On you go. See that okay? Just pulled apart. 165 grain game kings, so they do the job. Bring down stags, anything. 
thing about hunting samba is this is the sort of country they love, the rubbish. <laughs> I'm catching on everything. We'll get it. <laughs> Whoa. Well, the sick broke. I didn't know how to go. So I'm just going to make up another rig here from the bottle. So I've got a saw in the, in the back bay. Just take one of these nice little waddle here. A bit more springy. Not to say they need to, doesn't matter if they get taken away from here. There's heaps and heaps of those. So I'll pick a nice one. We'll cut it down and go again. Probably in about another, maybe two or three k's back to the car. It's hot. I'd rather hunt in the snow any day. Right, this is my handy saw. Let's go down and pick one of these. You don't want it too big because it's even more weight to carry. You don't want it to break either. Oh, this is interesting. This bean, I don't know whether you can see that. These are these spiders that are in the bush at the moment. There's been heaps and heaps of them. I reckon Ian and I have both walked through about two or three hundred. They're just everywhere. So it must be the time of the year. I don't know if anyone knows a bit about spiders. I don't know. There's heaps and heaps of them. <laughs> These are really good if you need to break the brisket and take the whole animal if you're near the car. You can hang it in a tree. You can use this to down the down the middle of the brisket, open it up. It's super long, it just gets caught on everything. Yeah, maybe here. Maybe. A little bit because that's going to be on the back of my neck. Right. What do you reckon, Meg? I like what the Kiwis do where they stick a saddle on their dog and make their dog carry some of this stuff out. I think that's a fantastic idea. What do you reckon, Meg? Get a saddle. If you do the work, you're going to get to eat some of this anyway. I wouldn't be too concerned of getting grass and stuff on it. What we do is just shave it off before we make it into sausages or steaks. Shave that outer layer off. I've tried carrying them out with plastic bags and <laughs> plastic bags just get caught on everything. Plastic bags are good if you're gonna throw it in a backpack. It keeps the blood out of your backpack, but if you're gonna be dragging it through the blackberries, it won't last very long at all. Anyone that reckons deer hunting's easy hasn't been deer hunting. It's hard work. So you wouldn't call it easy meat. It's hard work. <laughs> Just when you think you're getting closer, there's another hill to go. I oh, love it. There's the vehicle. There's nothing quite like seeing the vehicle when you're doing the carrier. If you're wondering what all this water is on my face, I, I use a spray bottle for special effects. <laughs> Just to keep it real. Looking forward to getting back to the car. Uh, the hardest part about shooting an animal this time of year is trying to keep it from going up with all the blowies. The blowies are just everywhere at the moment. Uh, so we've got all the back straps. Got those in the fridge. So that'll be good. This is one of those MSA, I think it's an MSA slide. And we've got the other tub here for the legs. We'll try and get them back and get them cooled down as quick as possible. Keep them going. It's been a good hunt. Legs a bit tired. I still like the idea of the Kiwis putting a, uh, a backpack on these dogs and making them carry their fair share as well. I'm going to look into that. 
Rob gave me that idea. I had it with Robbo over in Christchurch, and he had one on his Labrador. It worked a treat. All right, I'll keep packing up. I'll go try and find Ian. I did hear a shot from Ian before, so I think he might have got one as well. So we've got three animals on the deck. Uh, but it's feeding quite a few families. That'll be good. All right, I'll keep moving. been moving a few logs, just trying to get a bit closer to where I think Ian might have shot his. Um, that's where I heard the shot from anyway. He didn't bring his radio, he's been working up here doing some fencing so he didn't have his radio with him, so we've normally got radio contact. Trying not to damage the car. He does get a hard life this car. But that's what they're built for. These Toyotas go well. Just trying a few different camera angles here just to see what works and what doesn't work. I've got no idea when it comes to a GoPro. I borrowed my daughter's GoPro. Thank you, Danielle. What's the story, Uncle Ian? Well, He's a bit camera shy, Uncle Ian. There should be a spiker on the ground here somewhere. So we're just going to send the dogs in to have a bit of a look. There's Meg already at it. That's a deer standing right there at that patch of crepossum. Where? That's where she was. That's where, oh, that's where it was. I think you're saying that now. No, that's where it was. Oh, okay. I think Meg's already on it. She's gone. Find it. Where is it? Find it. Well, it's some blood out there. You hey, Meg. Oh, she's on it. Good girl. Where is it? Find it. Psst. Find it. Still, still. Find it. Psst. Where is it? Eh? I think she was. I think she was sitting on it. That would be it. She was sitting on it. Found it. Found it. You think you? I reckon you missed. Oh, it's smaller than I thought it was, too. It looks yummy. Extremely thick. This is like hunting on a football over. Ian sends me into the thick stuff and he gets to hunt on the football um, over. I think the discussion was where do you want to go, Brett? <laughs> So we're just saying that um, Ian shot it, we came over to look at it, the dogs wanted to go uphill. We thought no, wounded deer don't run uphill. Sure enough, 
coming uphill. Quail. Yeah, there you go. That's how easy a country you're hunting in. It's like the grasslands. <laughs> Good. I should have bought my roller skates as that thin. Need hunting boots. We use roller blades. These are the last of our um, samba and wild pork. We got about 99 pigs a little while ago. So luckily we've got some this morning. We're going to make some more of these. These are beautiful. There's the sonkey over there. Part samba, part donkey. Off to Ian Humphreys now to see what he can do with it. Okay, viewers, we're just introducing Ian Humphreys, fantastic taxidermist that should have come here in the first place. This is, uh, we call it a Sam donkey, it's cross, Sam across with a donkey, that sound about right, Ian? Well, it's, the face is not bad, okay. but it's the, it's the physique. So, yeah, the neck, the physique, isn't it? It should, have, it should have had a neck on it. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, do, you, Rick, do you believe that that's your head skin? No, we didn't actually have more. That was a, another head skin. Okay. So we shot one, and I said to him, um, I'd say it's like a lesser deer. "Yeah, it was." Animal. And we said to him, "Look, don't if that, you don't think it look good, don't put it that, on." That uh, deer must have had extremely well. Ah, Ian scored it in two oh nine and a half or something. I would have even thought it got better. Yeah. Anyway, that's a beautiful animal. I chased it for about well, nearly four years. Okay, then. That's generally the way I mount a sand. I like that top one. Fantastic. He just cried. Wow. See the size of the neck on this one here is so much. Yeah, but in order to get facial accuracy, I pump the glands up with this hypodermic serene. Ah, right. And under the eyelids, yeah. I had glass eyes in there, and then I get accuracy yeah. from casting directly off the animal. I slicked all the hair down with Vaseline. Is that right? And I took a mould in plaster, so I was from the creek. Puffing it back up with 20 <laughs> litre buckets of water, and but I, it gave me yeah. a fair degree of accuracy. Samba don't show a lot of muscle tone. No. They're a yeah. relatively smooth animal until they move. Yeah, yeah. You know? but, the face, but that looks so much more like it, doesn't the face, it? Like a rutting face um, has to have prominent preorbital glands. Yeah. Because it's the way they are. That's exactly. You know, I've seen periorbital glands hanging inside out. Yeah. On, on some stand. Wow. I've seen all the whites of them hanging inside out. They look down their nose at you. Yeah. They've got an arrogance about. They them. have, haven't they? Yeah. Like, come and get me if you. Yeah. 
but you won't see me for long. I'll be gone. You see the proud times. They've got their nose up in the air and, yeah. and, and they're ready as if they're either going to turn and go in two seconds yeah. or, or go right through you. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it too, isn't it? And that just, that's just not how they look in the bush. That was a, the worst part. They look nothing like that. Isn't, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic little. Yeah. You have to have a look at that. 25 and a half. 25 and a half, yeah. So this one here looking the same way, isn't it? You walk, you walk the one up. Yeah, if he's looking. You want this turn. Oh, yeah. Right. 29. Completely different. Yeah. I'll get it on that. Yeah. Yes. You good? Like, this is neat. Don't, don't, yeah, no, he hasn't done it. It's I'm just... just a... <laughs> if, if anything, a little bit too full there and not enough. Bit fine. Yeah. 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 It just... Yeah. It looks very wide there in the muzzle. They're very narrow up here, isn't he? Yeah. No, okay. In, in all sincerity, it's yeah. not. You sure it's not a donkey? <laughs> it's, just not, it's just a young deer. Yeah. And definitely, look, we gave him the cape, so we can't blame him for that. But I just said to him, don't, whatever you do, if you don't think it's going to work, yeah. I don't care, just use the cape for something else and I'll wait another five years. See, this, this hasn't, um, it hasn't reached. The cape hasn't been long no. enough for my to there. Yeah, and so it's all just been bogged up. Do you reckon you can get that bog out? Can I? You can see. So it's like a black... The hair from there to there hasn't been long enough. Yeah. And that's just been filled in with a an epoxy putty yeah. and coloured. So I'll, I'll try and clean all that right out with a router. Great. Oh, that'll be fantastic. Yeah. Just nice to see it was a big buffy animal. That's what he was in the bush when I shot him. Did you want to retain this because trying to get it out was is almost a, a bloody impossible No, no, I don't need it. I've got, to cut, I've got to cut all around the back of the skull yeah, and no, everywhere to get no, it out. We don't need to hang on to it at all. No, if you reckon it needs to be destroyed, start again. Oh, I didn't know what you wanted to do. I, I just like it to look like a samba <laughs> rather than a, than a donkey here. Yeah, that is... <laughs> if I could shoot one like that before I croak, I'd be a happy man. Hi viewers, just out uh, getting a little bit of firewood and just received a text from Ian Humphreys that the sonkey has been finished. It's amazing, it's only been just on a week and he's already done it and you're going to be super impressed when you see the end result. I'll do another video of it, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, and if you need any stocks at all, visit our Facebook page, Senator Stocks, and it's got all the contact details down there. Give me a call if you're wondering what guns they might fit, and I can walk you through it. Stay tuned for the next adventure. I think Matt's got one about a red stag coming up, so stay tuned for that one.